theirs. I mean, they claimed that, and they claimed it to the United Nations, and the United Nations and, and the courts had said, this is ridiculous. You've never occupied these islands. You can't say they're yours. But we have maps. Yeah, you have maps that show that you knew where the island was, but according to the documents to, to the um, United Nations Conventional Law of the Sea, they, you signed up for China. You signed. You, this, this nowhere meets it. Now this is just another Western plot designed to keep us down. That was literally the response. And they ignored it and built military bases on it. Now, why is the, well, what's the deal? Why are they doing that? Well, to be honest, it's got nothing to do with their territorial claims. It's got everything to do with the fact that 75% of the seafood in the world is consumed in Asia, and it's the largest growing market in China for the middle class. That and, as I said, a nuclear power plant every week they have no possible way of feeding these people. They have no possible way of keeping the power coming to these people. If they don't take the South China Sea, they're, they're going to face collapse. That's, and I don't mean the nation, I mean the Chinese Communist Party. And that's what's really driving it, the context of this. Okay? That's what's behind it. Economic espionage. Our estimates of ours just alone is $300 billion a year lost in espionage. Um, technology, intellectual property rights, data, as in, and now if you want to do business in China, you have all, all your servers have to be in China, all the data you have to do has to be in China. You know, don't worry, it's safe with us, has been their response, <laughs> really, quite literally. Um, but we have caught more than once the Ministry of State Security, the Joint Staff Department, as it's now called, the J2, formerly the General Staff Department. Uh, and in fact, I actually wrote the book on this uh, some time ago. Can I have one more minute? Okay. One, more. okay, one more minute. So we have all these entities that are involved with, um, with espionage from China. And I have to look at fake news for just a moment. Uh, so fake news, you can buy fake news. I mean, you can have your company, your fake news, uh, delivered online to tens of thousands of people. Right? Cost of bots are $1.69 to $6.40. You do it on the dark web, you can do it on the regular internet, because it's not illegal. Um, quick follow now, I've used them. Uh, you can do that to retweet a link to thousands and thousands of other groups, which in turn sends it out to hundreds of thousands of people. So as you see by this, constructing fake news is actually pretty easy. Right? It's not only easy in Russia, it's easy in the United States as well. So it, it is an issue that we are going to have to contend with. Go back to that first thing that we said about telecommunications, because you know, we have a society now that can go immediately to Congress and say, what the heck? You know, where in the old days you'd have to put a letter and have it taken on a wagon train. But now the response is immediate. So we have to contend with the fake news, you know, permeating our societies and do it in a way that doesn't infringe on privacy or First Amendment freedom of speech. Okay, so with that, I'll end. And uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry if I ran out of Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, we're also going to have a few questions.